Welcome to News Today with WW News Today. I'm Tom Corliss. Here now the news for November 29th, 2019. With Star Wars Rise of the Resistance finally opening in Galaxy's Edge at Hollywood Studios next week, uh, Disney has released a new preview of the attraction during the wonderful World of Disney magical holiday celebration. It's a mouthful on ABC. In the preview, we see many, many facets of the attraction not previewed before, including uh, we finally got a real good look at the transport that will act as a pre-show, attempting to take guests to safety, but instead getting captured by the First Order and being brought aboard the Star Destroyer. We also see ride scenes where stormtroopers shoot at guests from a balcony, large laser cannons that are fired at uh, resistant ships, and much, much more. Not to spoil too much, but you can watch the full video and see plenty of screenshots on our site. In a recent promotional video for the Walt Disney Company and Points of Light's Family Volunteer Day, additional scenes from inside Rise of the Resistance were also revealed uh, via that video. Inside, you get a closer look at the Stormtrooper Army uh, show scene, plus the at-ats in the attraction, and as well the droid at the helm of your ride vehicle. You also get a glimpse of the unload area for the first time, which is packed with containers of resistance supplies. You can watch that full preview as well, both of them, at www.nt.com. New signage has appeared outside of the Rise of the Resistance attraction ahead of the grand opening here at Walt Disney World. We first shared the ride synopsis from this sign back in February uh, when we also revealed the attraction's height requirement and the fact that the ride would indeed involve a swift drop. Uh, the sign says, Rise of the Resistance, join us on an exhilarating mission to stop the First Order. This mission includes rapid motion, sudden stops, sharp turns, and a swift drop as you evade capture from the First Order. Despite being in a trackless ride vehicle, guests will experience a drop towards the end of the attraction. The drop will simulate an escape pod blasting off, taking guests in their transport swiftly back down to the planet Batu. We're not talking about a drop like the Tower of Terror here, but uh, at least uh, most of the height of the fairly large show building that houses this attraction. The sign goes on to indicate the minimum height requirement, as we told you before, of 40 inches. And for the record, other trackless Disney attractions, such as Mystic Manor and Ratatouille, do not have this restriction since they don't feature a drop. Uh, children under the age of 7 must be accompanied by a, a person age 14 or older, and guests in wheelchairs or other mobility aids must transfer to the ride vehicle. Various preparations are underway both backstage and onstage at Hollywood Studios for the grand opening of Rise. Uh, the BB-8 parking lot, which is used by cast members, will experience various closures ahead of the grand opening. While a parking lot closure may not seem all that interesting, it is tied to the exciting debut of X-Wing drones at the park, which will be taking flight during the media preview and grand opening of the attraction. Tents were recently spotted at the cast member parking lot of Hollywood Studios. These tents house some of the drones that will be flown for the grand opening. The BB-8 lot will temporarily be unavailable to cast members on December 1st and 2nd overnight from 12 uh, to 5 a.m., December 3rd from 9.30 to 12 a.m., and uh, December 4th, 5th, and 6th from 5 to 11.30 p.m. You'll notice that these dates include overnight times in the days leading up to the grand opening, plus the media preview day, the grand opening day, and the day after. These times are attributed to rehearsals for the aforementioned X-Wing drones, with the drones making their debut on the media preview day and possibly the next two days as well, but I wouldn't count on them uh, beyond the media. Uh, of course, you may remember the dragon that flew over New Fantasyland for its grand opening that only appeared um, at the media event. According to Disney, a very large drone is expected to fly over Star Wars Galaxy's Edge during the grand opening ceremony, so it is possible that we may see other ships that are not X-Wings, <coughs> Millennium Falcon, uh, or something, I don't know, something of that sort. Uh, Star Wars Rise of the Resistance opens December 5th, 2019, of course, at Disney's Hollywood Studios, and it opens on January 17th, 2020, at the Disneyland Resort. There are new bathrooms open at Disney's Hollywood Studios, and while this may also not seem like big news, we've been anxiously following the construction since work started them at the beginning of the year. These were originally supposed to open in time for Star Wars Galaxy's Edge to help with the anticipated large crowds, but they were delayed, severely delayed. The bathrooms are located on Grand Avenue, just across from the baseline Tap House, making this probably the largest collection of restrooms in any Disney park in such a small space. You have Gonzo's Royal Flush over in the Muppets Courtyard, the restrooms at the ABC Commissary and Sci-Fi Dine-In, plus the old Backlot Express restrooms, which are still there on the backside of these. In fact, this is the first time in our recollection that old restrooms are kept open after new ones have been built in an adjacent location. It's never happened before. It's a weird thing. 
The restrooms feature an all-brick facade with the words Public Waterworks painted over the front to match the theming of the surrounding buildings in the area. The front entrance features an entryway into the women's restroom, and off to the side, you have one companion restroom plus the men's restroom, which is entered through an open barn door. Make your jokes now. Compared to the elaborate entrance of the women's restroom, the men's restroom probably evokes thoughts of uh, Disney California Adventure when that park opened, the beige stucco and little nothing little to nothing else in terms of decor but you may also recall in our earlier construction updates that there was an awning over that men's bathroom entrance but it is gone now for some reason there you have it folks the tiny bathrooms that took 11 months to build now open at disney's hollywood studios only 26 days till christmas and if you're looking to meet santa claus his meet and greet has just opened at the magic kingdom Town Square Courtyard has been transformed into a splendid garland-covered candy cane garden for the meet and greet, so we went over to check it out. Santa takes intermittent breaks throughout the day to make his list and check it twice. We didn't find the waits to be too long first thing in the morning and recommend you head here first if you're determined to meet the big man. You can meet Santa at the Town Square Courtyard from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. daily. The meet and greet runs through December 24th since Santa needs time to head out and deliver some toys. In honor of the annual Walt Disney World service celebration, the Magic Kingdom will be closing early on December 2nd. In order to prepare for the event, the Magic Kingdom will be closing at 4.30 p.m. this upcoming Monday, December 2nd. The park, will, uh, park open will be taking place at 8 a.m. that morning, so you still have a good amount of time to take in the sights and experiences of the holiday season in the park. The celebration honors cast members as they celebrate milestones in their career with the company. Our congratulations to all the cast members who have made magic for these guests all these years. The new guest relations ticket counter at Epcot's International Gateway has finally made its grand debut. It's conveniently located for guests staying at Disney's Boardwalk Inn or the Yacht or Beach Club or Swan and Dolphin, or those coming in from the Disney Skyliner at International Gateway. The Epcot International Festival of the Holidays kicked off today. Be sure to head on over to WWNT.com to read reviews of every food and drink item from every single holiday kitchen. You can also see every merchandise item from the event with prices. And stay tuned over the weekend for videos and more of the various entertainment acts running through the entire event until it ends on December 30th. Two new open edition Magic Bands have joined the lineup and they're the highly anticipated dark gray and mint green options. While these aren't available as uh, the standard complimentary Magic Bands one receives as part of a Disney Resort hotel reservation or vacation package, they are now available at various stores for you to purchase individually. They cost $14.99 each. Disney's All-Star Movies Resort has some tasty snacks in their bakery case, but we spotted something sweet on the menu that also contains vodka, the Yummy Bear Shake. This shake is a combination of Rainbow Sherbet, Tito's Handmade Vodka, and Gummy Bear. That's right, gummy bears and vodka. If you've never had that mix, it's, it's pretty good. Sign advertises the alcoholic yummy bear shake for $15, but it's only $13.25 in actuality. You can read our full review of this sugary delight on our site. For more information on these stories and more, head on over to WWNT.com. If you're enjoying the show, be sure to like this video, subscribe to WW News Today on, on YouTube for more great content, and click the bell for notifications. Do keep in mind, we are live for 50 hours starting at 9 p.m. tonight. It all begins with WW News Tonight at 9 p.m., and we're on for 50 hours. Lots of great live shows, a comprehensive history of the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror, uh, Park Center, Around the Hub. Uh, we have a fantastic live auction of Disney Parks goods from around the world, including um, signed pieces from the creators of Illuminations Reflections of Earth. Um, that auction, 100% of those proceeds benefit uh, Toys for Tots, as do all donations made during this 50-hour program. Please join us throughout the weekend here on YouTube at www.ntunes.com, um, wherever, Twitter, Facebook, um, wherever you can. It's going to be a lot of fun. For the Worldwide Leader in Disney Parks News, this is Tom Corliss saying enjoy the rest of your today and have a great, big, beautiful tomorrow.